Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch. I'm really happy to have you here for another garden tour. We live in the central interior of British Columbia, Canada, and we garden in a zone 3B. We have a very short season, and this year it was even shorter than usual. We had a killing frost on June 20th, which wiped out almost all of my squash, a ton of my pickling cucumbers, and a lot of my beans but we have basically had the most perfect gardening weather that any gardener could ever want since then. We have had some really hot temperatures interdispersed with a lot of rain. We may even see a little bit of rain in today's video. We'll see, hopefully it holds off long enough for us to get into the high tunnel. So I'm going to jump right into this garden tour. I have so much to show you today. So we're going to start in my very favorite place in the garden right now. I have been wanting to grow a pole bean tower in my garden basically since I started gardening over 20 years ago and I have never been successful. This year I think both the weather having the really hot temperatures really helped and also the fact that I started these in my greenhouse a little bit early. Normally you don't want to start beans indoors and then transplant them. They are really prone to transplanting shock which basically sets them back for a couple of weeks. So for the most part, in most growing seasons, you don't really save anything by doing that. You can just plant them right in the ground. But in this case, I decided I was going to give it a try and just be super, super careful when I transplanted them out. I made sure I transplanted them out on a cloudy day when I knew there was going to be a couple of days of clouds, just so that they didn't end up with really strong sun when they were first getting transplanted. I made sure I watered them very well, of course. And then I also made sure when I took them out of the seed trades, I was incredibly gentle to disturb the roots as little as possible. And I ended up with this gorgeous bean tower. Next year, I plan to have these all over the garden. Not only are they totally just the most beautiful thing ever, but they also grew scads and scads of these absolutely gorgeous beans. I have a couple of scarlet runner beans growing up in here as well. And in beside these beautiful beans, I have zinnia. Look at that. Isn't that the most beautiful flower? I am a huge fan of flowers in the vegetable garden. I think it actually serves a couple of purposes. Number one, it attracts pollinators, of course, which is what you want to have in your garden. And number two, they are beautiful. So they actually encourage me to be out in the garden more, weeding and things like that, just because I can look up from the tedious task of weeding and see beautiful flowers like this. And it just brings me joy. Next year, I plan to plant even more than I did this year, but let me show you what I did do this year. These orange zinnia are just the most beautiful thing. So many beautiful flowers. Okay, so in this row, we have zinnia planted here, the beautiful bean tower, down, wow, there's a lot of thunder going on. Down here, I have some yellow beans, which actually look like they need to be picked. These are bush beans planted in beside the bean tower. And beside that, I threw in some tomatillos. Generally, I plant tomatillos over in the high tunnel, but I had some space in my garden. And with all the extra heat that we were having, I figured why not give it a try? And they are actually doing really well. With tomatillos, you do want to make sure that you have two plants. They need two in order to cross pollinate. If you just have one, you will not. You'll get lots of flowers, but no tomatillos. I have beautiful calendula planted next to the tomatillo. And it's just, oh, they're so pretty. They're just such a cheerful little flower. The majority of them are going to seed and I am letting them do that because I do want to collect seed from these. So all I do is I wait until these turn brown and then I pluck these whole entire heads off like so. And then you can pull the seeds off once they have turned brown. Make sure that they're thoroughly dry before you put them in an envelope or a jar or something and then plant them the following year. And my garden just would not be my garden without nasturtiums. I just think they are the most beautiful flower and they do have the added benefit of being completely edible. They taste a little bit like a radish. And next to those, I have another beautiful patch of zinnia. Isn't that just the most beautiful thing? And Serena from You Can't Eat the Grass sent me these. These are called, I think it's safoin. If I have that wrong, I'll make sure I put it on the screen for you but they are the daintiest little flowers and the bumblebees absolutely love them. And next to those, I have another gorgeous patch of zinnia. Isn't this just the most spectacular thing? And these zinnia are probably three to four feet tall. And there's one of my honeybees. These work lovely as a cut flower, but to be honest, I just find them so 
beautiful in the garden that I leave them mostly for myself and the bees to enjoy. I just came around the corner and spotted this gorgeous flower head. Oh my gosh. Beside that, I have this beautiful, gigantic patty pan squash. And this one is called Sunburst and I really must come out and harvest. Look at those. And in behind that is my little corn patch. And these corn are the tallest corn I have ever grown. They are well over seven feet tall. And I am excited to say that there are ears of corn developing on this. And I just checked the weather forecast and we have another week of really warm weather. So I'm quite optimistic that we will actually see a corn harvest this year. These ones are candy corn. And then around the other side, this row here is called pink popcorn. And if I could actually get popcorn, that would be absolutely incredible. Normally you cannot grow popcorn in my zone, but this one is supposed to be a short season one. So we'll see. And I'm not sure if you can see in here, but I do have a bunch of squash that are growing in here. And I have not actually checked to see if there are any squash actually developing down there. So let's just take a peek in here and see if we can find any actual squash growing. I am not really surprised to not see a ton of squash in here. Oh, wait a minute. I do see something orange over there. Let's go look. Let's see. There is one tiny little orange pumpkin. Maybe once all of this dies back, we'll find a few more in there. That's encouraging. I didn't think we would get any. Like I said, our pickling cucumbers froze down to nothing. On some of the plants, there was only one leaf and they did not look like there was any way that they would ever recover. But look at this. We have been harvesting pickles from this patch for the last week and making scads and scads of sweet pickles and dill pickles and mixed pickles, all the pickles, which we love. And up through this way, we have some beautiful Brussels sprouts. As you can see on this one, I've actually pruned down the bottom. I could probably come up and prune off several more of these leaves. One of my gardening slash beekeeping mentors, his name is Tim, I actually met through this channel. He was telling me the other day that his wife prunes off the bottoms of their Brussels sprouts leaves. And he sent me a picture of their absolutely gorgeous Brussels sprouts. And basically anything Tim tells me to do, I do because I know it's gonna work. This plant that looks just like celery is a relative of the celery and it is called a celery act. You can see this big root, it's a root vegetable. This is the first time I've ever grown them and they are quite slow to start. It takes weeks and weeks and weeks for them to germinate. And this has been growing all summer and it's going to be ready to harvest any minute. It looks so beautiful, but apparently they store really well in the root cellar. Next to that, I have another beautiful little patty pan. This one is probably half the size of the other one, but the reason for that is that the other one is down at the bottom of this slope and gets a lot more water than this one up in the higher part of the garden, but it's still producing well. And next to that, I have something I am so excited about. This is actually celery. So this is the first year I've ever grown celery. And I started these little ones back in February and they are just absolutely magnificent. It's possible that I overplanted slightly, but that's okay. I have been harvesting off of these all summer, just cutting off as you can see around here and then letting the inside stalks grow again. My plan with all of these is I am going to dehydrate them. They actually dehydrate down to just being teeny tiny for adding to soups and stews and things like that in the winter. I also freeze a bunch to be able to add to stir fries. And when I process my turkeys, I am going to use them in my soup stock, which is what I did when I did my chicken stock and my beef stock. I just threw all whole bunch of these tops right into the stock pot. And next to the celery, we have some gorgeous beets. We have cylindra beets down here. Those are the long skinny ones. I love these for canning. They're just really easy to boil and peel and chop. And then I have some beautiful golden beets. I'll pull one out so you can see. Actually, that one is a white beet, not a golden beet. I didn't even think I planted any white beets this year, but apparently I did. If you'll remember last year, my beets did not do very well. And this year I thought it was gonna be the same thing. Germination was pretty poor, 
but they are starting to look beautiful and I will be harvesting these and getting them into the root cellar very soon. These wild overgrown gorgeous gardens over here are actually my children's gardens and the thing I love about these gardens is each garden is a little bit different and really shows my kids personalities. At this point they're getting pretty overgrown but they've done an excellent job of maintaining them throughout the summer and they're quite proud of all of the produce they've managed to pull out of these gardens. And of course I have this gorgeous scarlet kale. This is one of my favorite kales to have in the garden just for its beautiful color. Um, onions, this is a new type of green onion that I planted this year. As you can see down here, there's a little bit of red that's coming up. This was in a test box of seeds that I got from West Coast Seeds to try out. They were super easy to grow. These were all grown from seed, really delicious green onion tops. And when you pull out the bottoms, it's kind of like a shallot. And these are my beautiful dead end cabbages. Whenever I say their name, I always think, why on earth did they call them a dead end cabbage? Because they are the absolutely <laughs> most beautiful cabbages, as you can see, some cabbage worm has been munching away on this. But these have a light kind of a lime green center. This is a late season, so these won't be picked until the beginning of October. These pickling cucumbers I actually bought at the local nursery when I thought that I had lost all of the ones that I had started from seed myself. We thought we weren't going to get any, and now we have more than we could ever use. Beside that, I have these collard greens. This is a different variety of collard greens than I have grown before. It's a bunching style collard, but as you can see, it is absolutely humongous. I have this patch here and then this little patch over here. So we have more collard greens than we could also ever use, but I'm not complaining, they're delicious. And beside the collards, we have carrots, lots and lots of carrots. Let's pull one out and see how they're doing. I did a terrible job thinning my carrots this year, just a terrible job. They are definitely not very big. Delicious, but not very big. Let's try another one. Still have some growing to go for sure, but they are looking great. So these squash plants were the ones that I was sure would, were completely dead. I didn't think there was any way that they were going to grow. But just as I was walking along now, I looked in and I spotted this baby blue Hubbard squash. And it's not a terribly bad size either. It's nowhere near ripe. Likely will end up having to ripen indoors. But still, that's encouraging. And then beside it is this absolutely monstrous zucchini plant. I have never in my life grown a zucchini plant this big. Oh my gosh, look at that. And there is another one. I literally was out here last night picking zucchinis. These, I did not see these guys hiding in there. Oh my goodness. Wow, not bad for a plant that literally had maybe one leaf on it at the end of June. This gorgeous squash plant, another one that was completely dead. So this one is my very favorite squash of all time. And I did see a few little baby candy roasters. These are gigantic squash, so this is pretty small. But even still, that's exciting. And then I had a little bit of space back over here. So I just threw some beets in here a little bit late, but they are also looking beautiful. Oh, this makes me so happy. Some Turk turban squash. This is so exciting, you guys. The fact that I'm finding all these squash in plants that truly were beyond repair, at least I thought they were. Like, look at these. Oh my gosh. What on earth? Look at that. I genuinely feel like crying at this moment. Look at all these squash. I haven't been down to look through this area and I have found probably 20 squash, which relatively speaking is a pretty small harvest for me. Normally I harvest over 200. 
but considering I honestly didn't think I was going to get any and I thought I was going to have to buy all my winter storage squash this year, this is amazing. I was just up at the house editing this video that you are now watching when I realized that my microphone had died for the forest garden tour part of the video. So my forest garden, which we are standing in right now, is a permaculture food forest that I planted about, I think, four years ago now. And um, anyway, my microphone died for that part of the tour and it turned out to be okay since just the main garden tour went on for quite some time already. In fact, if you made it to this part of the video, congratulations, that's awesome. <laughs> but I do promise that I will give a tour, a complete tour of this garden uh, probably in the next couple of days or so. Maybe even I'll film it tomorrow and get it up for you on Sunday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.